Hi, my name is Tim Sasserchi. Today I'm going to show you how to use the Device Master PN1 gateway. And this is going to convert the Modbus TCP protocol to my Profinet IO protocol. So this is my basic setup. My Device Master gateway, you see at the bottom, will convert the Profinet IO protocol to and from the Modbus TCP, allowing my Siemens PLC to communicate directly to, to my Modbus AS interface gateway. Understanding AS interface is not important. I only want to use it as a discussion point for the Modbus communication. Um, the Device Master Gateway will also talk Modbus ASCII or Modbus RTU, a serial protocols, but we can talk about those at a later date. So let's dig into what the Modbus device can do. So I'm going to read and write 16 registers, and these are 40,000 registers. I will read the input starting at 4,097. This just comes directly from the specification of the device, okay? So don't be afraid of that. And I will write the output starting at 4,113. Your device will have a specific set of registers that you will use. This is just how my device works. Now, I've also defined this as device ID one. You're gonna see that in the next slide here as well. So the first thing you wanna do is use port vision. This is a very simple and free protocol software that you can use to set your IP address. Okay, so once the IP address is set, put it in your browser, make sure you're in the same subnet, and poof, you're going to have your configuration utility without any extra software. All right, when you do this, what you're going to do is set up under Modbus, remote Modbus configuration. This is where you're going to define the device ID and associate it to a Modbus TCP address. Okay, so I put in my IP address of my device, 192.168.137.10, and I've defined it from device ID 1. The uh, remote Modbus port and timeout, you can leave at defaults if you like and just hit save. From here on out, this device will be called device ID 1. All right, the device ID is used from here on out to exchange the I.O. The device ID for the device master shared memory is defaulted to 252, so that's what I'm going to use here. So inputs at address 4097, that's where I define my device inputs as, will be sent to device ID 252 at address 1. Outputs are sent from the address 401, and you'll see why in a second. This is the internal memory of device ID 252 to address 4,113 of device ID 1. And then lastly, adjust the pull rate. You want to adjust this so you get the inputs and outputs exchanged as quickly as you need it for your application. Okay, next thing, shared memory. We want to make sure that this is set up correctly so we can see it in the Siemens PLC. So go to the shared memory tab under data mapping and double check that the address is 252 just like i said the default was and make sure the shared memory checkbox is selected choose save and lastly you'll see that the reason why i, I chose one for the inputs was one to 400 have been set up as input and they're going to be exchanged with the, with the PLC as such. And 401 to 800 are set for the outputs. So 1 at 401 is where I want to put my I.O. Next thing, let's jump to the PLC. So we're going to add our Profinet device, our Device Master PN1, to the PLC uh, software. And this is the TIA portal software. But the first thing you want to do is import the GSD ML file and use Pronita or some other tool to set the Profinet name. Okay, this is gonna make it uh, very easy for you in the next step when you add the device to the configuration. Okay, so in my project, this is TIA portal, I wanna exchange really only 16 registers of input, 16 registers of output. So I'm just using registers, so I add my registers and I just want one set of 200 registers for read, the one set of 200 registers for write. And you can see here, the last thing is make sure that the PNIO read enabled, that checkbox is selected anytime where you're putting inputs directly into the PLC. Okay. 
and that's about it. You can see that I've left the other modules blank and I'm only using modules one and three to exchange my data. You can see there's still a lot of capacity left for other devices if I have them. Okay, and lastly is let's do a test. I don't need any logic in the PLC to make this test. I'm gonna simply use my watch table, okay? So IW300, IW330 will contain the 16-bit Modbus registers for inputs, and then QW300 to QW330 will contain my 16 Modbus registers for outputs. That's all there is to it. Just remember to right-click and force the outputs on for the test. Simple as that. So the next step would be is I'm gonna run through this with a screen capture program, uh, just so you can see me to do it live. Let's take a look. Okay, step one is I'm gonna use port vision to double check the IP address. You can see it's already correct here, but if I wanna make a change, I just double click on it, and then it's gonna give me all the settings right here so I can, I can make a change. Okay, now that I've configured my IP address, I enter that IP address directly in my web browser. And then I wanna go to the Modbus, remote Modbus configuration, and I wanna add my Modbus device here. So device ID 168.137.10. Leave everything else default and choose save. Okay, next thing. Let's go to the data mapping tab to Modbus to Modbus communication. And I'm gonna add the two exchanges. Now I'm gonna add them here. I'm gonna add two lines. So device ID one to device ID 252. And I'm exchanging 4,097, 16 registers. I want to exchange it at 250 millisecond intervals, and it's going to one. Also, the next thing is the reverse. 252, holding registers for a one, 16 again, 250 milliseconds. And then here, device ID one, 4113. Choose save. Now I go to the data mapping shared memory section. I'm gonna check this, double check this is 252, 400,001, and choose save. Okay, let's go into the PLC project a bit. If you haven't done it already, go ahead and import your GSDML file using this option in the TI portal. I'm using version 15, but it's available in others as well. And now I've, once it's in the uh, system, I can drill down on the Profinet and find my ICDM RXPN1, and I'm using the four port model here. I'll drag it over. Once you've dragged it over, where it says not assigned, you can just check, select the Profinet device, and it will draw the line for us. Good to go. Now, once I've done this, I'll usually double click on it. It pulls up the device view. Now, what I wanna do here is, number one, I just said I'm doing only holding registers. So I'll drag holding registers over here. And then I wanna fill up my submodules. So my two submodules are my read 200 registers right there and write 200 registers. You know, it's way more than I need but that's okay. Just make sure you fill it in correctly. Slot one and slot three. Also, double check two things. The Profinet name, which is down here, I left it the default, but then the IP address. In my case, I want dot 34 to be the IP address of my device. So we're okay there. And then you can see here my memory. I said in my project, I want this to start at 300. Oops. So I'll do that. And I want to start the inputs at 300 as well. All right, that's all we got to do. Now we'll just compile and download. All right, downloaded my project. Everything looks great. I went and set up a watch table. 
So IW300, so IW330 for my in, QW300 for the out. And I got my photo eye on my ASI module one. You can see it right here, I'm moving it back and forth. You can see it switch. Also, if I want to force the outputs on, I want to turn all the outputs on for that module. And I'll just right click, file, and that's it. Pretty simple. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to contact us. Don't forget to like, share, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay tuned for our next video and have a great day.